Good afternoon, uh, fellow Kenyans. Defeating coronavirus will require agile execution, testing, and prompt management of confirmed cases. Indeed, the world over, countries have adopted the mantra, test, isolate, treat, trace. Kenya has adopted this mantra. And today, we want to share with you the progress made in execution of this approach. With regard to testing, the Pharmacy and Poisons Board is now accelerating regulatory decisions regarding approval of COVID test kits. The board is implementing stringent expedited accreditation mechanism, which has shrunk the process from three months to 48 hours. Using this approach, the board has authorized the employment of four test kits for detecting the virus, which are currently being used. And these include COBASA COVID-2 test kit by Lodge Diagnostics, Expert Express SARS-CoV-2 by Cefit, Biofire COVID-19 test by Biofire Defense LLC, Abbott by Abbott Molecular Inc. With this approach, our capacity for testing will be expanded from our current 10 to cover at least one laboratory in each county. This is expected to take place in the next two weeks. We request that incoming applications are uploaded along with the requisite documents to the PPB portal. As shared in the past briefings, the current phase involves deployment of targeted testing with a focus on frontline healthcare workers, identified hotspots and clusters in Nairobi, Mombasa, enhancing community-based surveillance and screening trunk transit drivers. With regard to isolation and quarantine, we have 33 quarantine centers that are currently active. We have closed down a good number of sites. At the moment, we have 483 individuals in the various centers across the country. We have also quarantined 455 other persons for defying national curfew regulations. And I think this is important to note because once you are out during curfew hours, it is assumed that you have now been exposed, and therefore, if you are taken, you will be taken to a quarantine site for 14 days at your own cost. With regards to treating, our success on treatment is highly dependent on our ability to protect our frontline healthcare workers and heroes in this fight. To this end, we have distributed 4,759 complete personal protection equipment kits and 237 assorted components, i.e. goggles, surgical masks, N95 masks, gowns, rubber boots, shoe covers, etc. All quarantine sites and port health facilities have also received assorted protective gear. We have also trained over 30,000 healthcare workers, and training is still ongoing. The target is to resensitize 100,000 more in the next few weeks. 1,000 police officers have also been trained, particularly those manning roadblocks. 1,000 National Youth Service, NYS officers, 300 prison 
officers because you appreciate that prison is a very sensitive uh, area in this disease and 53,000 community health workers using an online based module by Red Cross, IMREF and the Ministry of Health. Further today, further to this, we are today launching a special designated isolation and treatment facility for our healthcare workers. This facility we will be able to offer both critical care, basic care services for our healthcare workers. All costs incurred during treatment shall be met by the government. This center is a product of collaboration between the Ministry, the, the ministry of Health, the Rockefeller Foundation, and AMREF. We thank both of them for this kind gesture. And I think that Rockefeller Amref is well represented here, as well as the managing director of Rockefeller, who is also here with us. Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate what you have done for us. And we hope that um, uh, you don't mind if we become uh, those people who are always coming around for seconds. Still on treatment, Adequate supply of oxygen is crucial in the management of COVID-19 disease. Towards this, I am appealing to national and county health facilities to settle any debts owed to oxygen suppliers. Those holding oxygen cylinders should also make plans to return them to their suppliers so that we can have them filled up. I am aware that we have also have a number of oxygen plants of our own in the facilities. However, let me also caution that facilities with such plants should make haste and repair what is not functional because I'm aware that there are some oxygen facilities that are not functional, but also do a quick cost-benefit analysis to ensure that when you are planning to build a plant, an oxygen plant, ensure that you are getting value for money. Because I am aware that there are some plants that were built by some Zesh, Zesh companies, Slovak companies, that no longer can be serviced because there are no uh, spare parts for some of them. So I would like to urge that uh, before counties and other hospitals uh, think about uh, putting an oxygen plant facility, let's think hard. Perhaps getting it from local suppliers might actually be cheaper and getting them service. In any case, hospitals are not experts at running these oxygen plants. And I think that if you do get a hospital plant, then you might require to do a management, um, a management arrangement with a company that can settle them. Otherwise, you'll have them all over the country but half of them will not be working. With regards to tracing, 11 more persons have tested positive for the disease today, bringing the total to 281 in the country. Of these confirmed cases, seven are Kenyans from Mombasa. And in that Mombasa area, we have got quite a few, I think three, are from Bondeni in the old town in Mombasa. We have a few also uh, from other areas, Miritini. I think we have a, a, a case from Miritini. And a couple of other areas within Mombasa uh, town itself. The, ones, the other four are from Nairobi. And those ones are from Ruaka. The Ruaka area is where we, we got uh, those four. And none of those have a recent travel history as such. And five are female, while six are male. Seven of those are from our quarantine centers, the ones in Mombasa in our quarantine centers, and four were picked by a surveillance team from various parts of the country.
They are aged between 11 and 80 years old. And I can confirm that uh, the harborist who died in Mombasa, Old Town, the, the three in that area, in the Old Town, are actually contacts of the harborist who died in the same area. And there goes the whole idea and why we are always, always talking about uh, keeping distance. That's why we are always talking about uh, uh, people going around and not taking care and not wearing masks. These are some of the results that we are getting as a result of this shortfalls. We are also happy that two patients have recovered and been discharged. And out of those two patients, I can also report that one of them is a doctor. We are two doctors who had uh, tested positive, and one doctor is still under treatment, while the other one has, has uh, recovered. So we now have a total of uh, 69 recoveries. The number of people we have lost remains at 14. Today, I also want to make a special appeal to people in the counties of Machakos, Kajiado, Kiambu, and Muranga. As Nairobi metropolitan counties, you have a special responsibility to guard against the spread of coronavirus from Nairobi County. Already, a number of your residents have contacted the virus, and we have isolated them for treatment. In Machakos, for instance, we have seven cases. One from Soikimau, one from the two from Siokimau, and there is one each in uh, Ath River, Kamulu. We have a case now from uh, Kamulu, uh, Ruby Garden Estate. We have uh, a case from Kithunguni and Viranji. In Kiambu, we have a case each of the following estates. Gidurai has a case. Gidurai 45, Dongoru, the Degua, Tinganga, Waidaka, and Wataalam. Kajiodo 2, we have cases in Kitengela, in Matasia, and Ongata Rongai. In Muranga, we have two cases in Gatanga and Lumumba Drive. All these cases are being treated in our various hospitals, and we hope and pray that they will soon be cured. But the reason for mentioning the specific areas is to establish and to show you that it is not an Nairobi disease, it is not a stranger's disease, it is something in your neighborhood. It is something that is being carried by a brother, a sister, it is something that is within a friend that you have, and therefore it is just to emphasize the need for social distancing, and the need to be just careful as we move along. I think if we do that, if we are careful, then we can continue to contain uh, this disease. You will notice that it is growing. As you can realize, Mombasa, seven in a town in one day in Mombasa, that is not a small number by any standards. And if you can multiply a, back, um, a factor of four, it tells that if you do not withdraw those people from uh, the town, then each of them will go and multiply by four, and there goes the exponential figures that we have been uh, talking about. So today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, the reason why we are here is essentially to take care, to take care of our frontline people, to ensure and to encourage them and to tell them we are thinking about them. As you are aware, the president uh, uh, ordered that we start thinking about uh, what sort of uh, encouragement we can give further in terms of welfare to our frontline workers. And I can confirm to you that these are ongoing discussions 
and we will be announcing uh, soon what we, have what we have agreed upon. And I can also confirm here that in addition to the government, there are also many people in the private sector who, are also, who also want to do something. And this is also work in progress. So stay encouraged, stay safe, stay safe. More than anything else, stay safe. As you are aware, in some of the countries that uh, the disease has infected people, and I think in Spain, for example, it was about 10% of the infections were healthcare workers. Here, we do not want to hear of anything like that. We want to ensure that uh, our health workers are the ones who are protecting us, not us treating them. I want to thank you very much. Thank you very much. Maybe you can take two questions. I think because of the rain. Two questions only. Yes, I remember. Dr. Amot, last time you did say that uh, the month of April will be uh, a month of reckoning for Kenya. Maybe with only 10 days left uh, for this month of April, you do still hold that indeed in the next few days we do have to uh, brace for hard moments as a nation. Thank you, Kaemba. That was far but not mine. Yes. is with regards to uh, the sample size that you have tested in the last 24 hours and cumulatively as well as uh, what is the plan going forward for those patients that are being released what, in the case of our reinfection, what is the plan? I'm going to let uh, Dr. Amoth uh, um, respond to the technical issues, but let me just uh, talk about uh, the numbers we have tested so far in the country. Yesterday, we tested fewer than the previous day because of a shortage. There is a global shortage of one of the items that uh, we are using, and we are hoping that uh, we can get it between today and tomorrow. Essentially, it is, uh, what do you call it, the nose of what? <laughs> Whatever, that one. <laughs> the, the, so, <laughs> the, the one that's sticking in your nose. And this is the one that we are asking our, our people here, that this is not something we should be buying from China, really. Some sharp business person should be making these things and we, and we have got a big market. But uh, uh, so we have uh, in total in the country uh, 13,872 samples have been tested so far. Dr. Amos. Thank you, Waziri. Uh, I think we have had various modeling uh, plans. And the first one, of course, is the one we talked of April being our, our time of reckoning. But if you look at the samples that we have tested, eh, because of the global supply challenges in regard to testing kits and the commodities used for sampling, we have not hit the number that we had anticipated going forward in terms of the numbers we are expecting to have tested by then. So we still stand by that. And 